All right, good morning, New Life. How's everybody doing today? Good, good, good. You guys are louder than that. Come on, I know you're louder than that. There we go. Just got back from the youth camp. Pretty cool. Um, so we're going to be hearing some, I believe we're going to be hearing some testimonies from the youth and stuff today. Um, but I just want to open up and just share my favorite part about the, uh, the trip. I got to go with them and just watch them pour out their heart to the Lord. Uh, but we had a speaker. His name was Andy, this English guy, and just really funny, really great. But he brought a message that was really necessary, really needed, and he called it microwave Christianity. You guys remember that? All right, good. Um, and he just encouraged the kids to um, stop seeking that immediate, that quick fix in their life. He encouraged them to get deep with the Lord, and he encouraged them that when they go home, they're going to need to learn to walk it out and really pursue it and be okay with the process that the Lord's going to bring us to. And so I just wanted to share that. I don't want to share too much because I know they got a lot to say. I don't want to take the words out of anybody's mouth. Um, but I just want to encourage us to be excited for the youth. And um, I want to encourage you guys to be excited and bring that fire here today um, that you had at camp. Um, amen. I'm going to pray over us and we're going to get going. So Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for um, what you've been doing at this church and in the hearts of everybody. I pray that you would meet us here as you always do today and that you would bless us in the individual ways that we need. And we thank you. We love you. We praise you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen.
many believe that, that God has good plans for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Lord, we just trust your plans today. We enter into your presence this morning with joy. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Why would I 
He has good plans, right, church? Amen. Why don't we uh, have a seat for just a moment? Uh, we got some family business to take care of and some uh, some announcements. So funny how the the Lord knows how to uh, like hammer a point home, right? Like I was just uh, with the leaders and and we meet on Sunday mornings um, with all the different department heads and group and talking about um, just Psalm 23 and the shepherd and just what that looks like. And we, we, most of us could quote that. We, we know it. But I just felt the Lord this morning was like, I, I, want, I want people to look at that as like in Psalms 1 where it says, blessed is the man you've heard me say, like you should put your name there. Like, or blessed is the woman, or blessed is Sarah, or blessed is Steve. And you read that that way. And in Psalm 23, I was encouraging our leaders, you need to put yourself in it. Not read it from David writing this, from his perspective, but this is true over you. And uh, just looking at the beautiful part of, sometimes we, we look at the good shepherd part and we just think, well, well, sheep are dumb and we're the dumb ones. And we leave it at that. But the, the reality that, that I think the Lord wants us to see is that we are his sheep. And... I was telling the leaders, I said, sometimes um, I feel like I need to defend myself. Or I feel like, I don't know if you know, but sheep are not, like, they're not, they're not aggressive normally, like not healthy ones. Um, they, don't, they don't have um, sharp teeth. They're not, they don't have defense mechanisms very, like, they're pretty well dependent on the shepherd. They're not able to fight. They don't have big claws. They they're not able to jump over big walls in a single, like, they're fully dependent on the shepherd. And he wants us to be fully dependent on him. He wants us to trust that he will provide for us. He will lead us in the best path of our life. He will come after us even when we were knuckleheads and some of the dumb sheep and thought the grass was greener on the other side. He will lovingly woo us back and bring us back and not break our legs puts us back in the green pasture and when we get all fuzzed up and worked up because the water around us is running too fast and we get crazy he brings us beside still waters amen he is a good shepherd and he has good plans for you amen amen all right i get an opportunity this morning to have some folks come up i'm going to give you um, your certificates of baptism. We got to go up to uh, Silver Lake a couple weeks ago and just fellowship, have a picnic, and baptize some folks. So, um, Violet, are you here today, Violet? Yeah. Come on up, Violet. And then uh, Mackenzie Klaus. Is, is Mackenzie here today? All right. There you go. There you go. I call her Little Mac. I'm just saying. Sarah Andrus, would you come up? Yay! Woo! Where's my homie Sam Pezzi? Where you at? Come on. There you go, Sam. Karen, where you at? Special K. Where's Keegan? Come on, Keegan. I think we'll be getting this young man here pretty soon, I think. <laughs> so cool. Hey, um, I just wanted you, you guys to, and baptism, most of us understand what it is. We're, we're, we're symbolically and partnering with the, the death of Jesus. We're dying to our old life. We're dying to our, our past and to the sinful nature in that, that life, burying it, and then we stay there. No. No, we resurrect with Christ. There's a resurrected life to come. And, and we now are partnering in that new life, and that's what baptism represents. But I, I just want to share with you guys, um, it, it also is a sign to the world. It's a sign to um, those, so those, those of you who weren't able to participate in that, you're participating kind of in that, that you're seeing that, hey, we made that step. And it also, not just for our sake, I believe we are showing the other unseen realm. Putting them on notice. Hey, I was on this side. I'm on this side. Amen? That's Amen. a declaration that baptism does. It, it's, it puts you in, you're on this team. I was on this team. Now I'm on this team. I'm putting you on notice. 
this is whose side I'm on. Amen? Amen. So these guys have made that um, statement, and young ladies, and, and young ladies, I won't, I won't go any further than that. God bless you. So uh, let's, just, uh, let's just stretch forth our hand, and let's just pray over them. Lord, thank you for this step. Thank you for this declaration. Lord, thank you for this um, obedience to tell the world, I am no longer on the, the team of darkness, on the team of death. I'm on a team of life and a team of hope and a resurrected life. And, and uh, our king is Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord, for their declaration of that. Lord, I pray for uh, covering over them, Lord, as they go forward. And I pray, Lord, that you would give them the desires of their hearts, that you would fulfill the giftings and purposes and plans that you placed in them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 All right, guys, you can have a seat. All right. Um, some, if you have your bulletin today, if you don't, there'll be some information probably up on the screen. Um, Sunday, August 13th, we're going to do another Church Lake Day. So, yeah, there's excitement there. If, uh, if you've missed out on these, um, you don't want to miss out. And it says to bring some stuff. So bring your own lunch chairs. Lunch, yeah. Actually, it's pretty cool. Sometimes people actually share. It's kind of cool. Um, um, bring your chairs. Um, if you have um, kayaks, bring your kayaks. If you have paddle boards, bring your paddle boards. If you have... If you want to bring a boat, bring your boat. If you want to bring fishing poles, bring fishing poles. Okay, it's just a day to hang out together. Um, if we get some more people saved, we'll do some more baptisms. So, like, go out there and spread the message of the, of the Lord, and, and maybe we'll get to do some more baptisms out there at the lake. And thank you, Jesus, the, warm should be, the water should be warmer. <sighs> Praise the Lord. It was pretty cool last time getting to see the snow-covered mountains behind us, um, knowing that all that is running into that lake. Praise God. <laughs> so... Um, that will be after service, the 13th, um, so put that on your calendar. Also, uh, August 18th through the 20th, um, Abide and Gather Women's Retreat, I think at this point, yeah, super excited for the ladies to be able to go get away and get poured into, and uh, guys, um, you get a break too. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I actually hate it when my wife leaves, it's like, oh, like I so, I so value her, and when she's gone, it's just like, man. There's a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> I got double trouble outside and inside. So, um, but no, we're we're excited that the ladies get to go get a break, get poured into, come back and uh, be filled up. Amen. So, uh, also put on your calendar September the 24th is will be our um, annual church picnic at the Italian picnic grounds. If you come here the 24th, there'll be a sign on the door saying we're at the Italian picnic ground. So. Um, same thing, bring, bring your chairs if you want, a blanket, um, we will have food and all the games and stuff provided that day, but just get that down on there, uh, September 24th, church picnic. All right, I think I got the announcements. Maybe not. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I was going to get to the kids. Um, kids, where are you at? Children of age, all ages, boys and girls, come on down. Yep, come on, kids. I feel like there's still a lot of kids out there. Maybe oh, here they're coming. Here they're coming. Hi. <laughs> here we go. So cool. I love seeing the kids, don't you? God has uh, entrusted us with the care of these young ones, and we are so blessed to have them um, be a part of this church and a part of this body. And thank you, Miss Abelina, and all the different ones who were sharing. Uh, helping in the children's department take care of our kids and, and train them up. Amen? Let's, uh, let's pray over them. Lord, we thank you for these kids. We thank you, Lord, that um, they are so blessed and they are so beautiful and they, they reflect you so well. And Lord, um, they are right here in front of us to show us that you want us that have gotten older and more sophisticated and wise in our theology um, to never forget that that's how you want us to be free like these kids. And thank you, Lord, for giving us the ability to become like them, that we can be your children, um, sons and daughters of the Most High God. Lord, I just pray protection over them. Lord, I pray a fiery hedge of protection, Lord, that the, uh, the enemy who would try to still kill and destroy would be bound up. Lord, that you would just place angelic hosts and heavenly beings, Lord, um, around them to keep them safe and protected. 
In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 You guys are dismissed. Have a good time. And uh, now we get an opportunity to transition um, into back into worship. And we're going to worship with our tithes and our offerings and our uh, giving. And if you, uh, you have, we have these plates up here on the altars that you can come and bring your offering. Um, there's a box in the very back that if uh, those things get taken away or you don't get it there in time, you could always drop it up there in that box. And uh, there's text to give. There's uh, all kinds of different ways to, to give here at New Life. And uh, it's a great opportunity um, to show that we do trust the shepherd. Amen. It's a good opportunity to, to see um, when we're able to be blessed by him that we're able to bless others. And uh, just such an awesome thing that the church um, is able to partner with ministries around the world, uh, ministries that help protect kids, ministries that uh, go and help the persecuted church, um, the, the missionaries that are in the foreign fields, and local um, areas, the Pregnancy Help Center, all the different areas in the community also that the church helps bless, um, that, that this church helps bless. And uh, that's where your, your tithes and offerings go and also to provide a building for us to be able to come and worship the Lord and have air conditioning, praise God. <laughs> so, Lord, thank you that, that, first of all, that we were so blessed to be born in this great nation. Lord, where we have freedom to worship. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, I have been outside this country, and I do understand how blessed we are. Lord, thank you that we are not in fear today of anyone coming in and, and kicking down doors and um, persecuting us because of our faith. So we lift up to church around the world today that would be in that situation. Lord, they're meeting in the underground church. They are, um, they are meeting in jail cells because they have not um, succumbed to cowering down and, and not saying that Jesus is king. So we just pray for them today, Lord, and, and we ask that, Lord, um, all of the ministries that this church helps support would be blessed. And we thank you for your tremendous blessing on our lives, that we get to be um, literally in this nation, we're rich. We might think we're middle class. We might even think that we're in the bottom class. Every single one of us in this nation is extremely rich. We thank you for that blessing. And we thank you that we get to give. We get to worship you with our tithes offerings. In Jesus' name, amen. And how I live for the moments where I'm still in your presence All the noise dies down Lord, speak to me now You have all my attention And I will linger and listen I can't miss a thing Cause Lord, I know my heart Wants more of you My heart want something new so i surrender all cause all i want is to live within you now being done by who you are my desire is to know you deeper
death had claimed its victory. The King of love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. There on a cross they made for sinners. For every curse his blood atoned. One final breath and it was finished. But not the end we could have known. For the earth began to shake. And the veil was torn. But
something very strong, a presence of the Lord that just literally said there's been something in my heart for many years and it's just been there and I've like struggled with it and he just said it was just like a key going in the door you're free <laughs> and I just Amen. didn't begin to picture, you're singing a song when the kingdom, free, when the king of freedom walks in, everyone's free I just pictured and, and I just believe there's so many cells represented here prisons, cells there's areas of your hearts and your minds and, and your soul realm, mind, will, and emotions that the enemy's had you and, and some of you in the hole. You think, and some of you put yourself in protective custody. Yeah. Don't PC yourself up. When the king of glory walks in, everyone's free. And there should be, and there is a, there's a spirit of, there's a celebratory um, happening right now, but I want you to keep doing that song a little bit just... And those of you, I believe the Holy Spirit's coming in, and I don't think I was the only one, but if you have an encounter that, say, Lord, open my cell too. Lord, I want to be free too. Because guess what? He's got the keys. And when he comes in, he doesn't just free one. He's no respecter of person. He's no respecter of person. It's not on you. It's not on how good you've been. You just have to hunger and thirst. Say, God, I want to be free. And he's a God that frees. So I just believe, like, 
just take a moment, take a few more minutes and allow the Holy Spirit to go in and free. And, and when you get free, if you were literally locked up, if you were literally locked up with, with 25 to life and someone came in and said, open the door, the doors clicked open, he said, you can go home. You wouldn't be like, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Jesus. No, you'd be jumping up and down, screaming and shouting and yeah. running home. Yeah. Can you hear his footsteps? Can you hear his footsteps? Can you hear his footsteps?
Amen. Amen. Oh. <laughs> you guys feel some heat in the room or what? Oh my gosh, that was awesome. That was so good. Well, um, I'm going to share a few things of just, we're going to go in through and have some people share some testimonies, but before we do, I'm going to be um, just kind of, I'm going to be kind of talking about just the things that the Lord has done in my life and like kind of what I've been seeing throughout and kind of like the common theme um, with what camp went and how camp went and all that kind of stuff. So it was really good. Um, <clears throat> but as I had gone to camp, there was a lot of things that I feel like the Lord was like really speaking to me about, especially leading up before camp. So before we actually even like we had youth group on Thursday, left for camp on Friday, and it was just super neat to see how the Holy Spirit showed up the day before camp. And um, so I'm going to talk about that a little bit. But basically, there was a lot of breakthrough that night. We really kind of went into the motto of freedom, just like how we had. There was a little bit of deliverance on Thursday night. And it was just super cool to see people walk out of something that they were going through, um, especially leading up to camp. Because I feel like the Lord was calling. I mean, the camp theme was missions. So um, it was cool to see how the Lord has repeated missions throughout youth group and throughout before we even went to camp. But um, so anyway... There was a lot of breakthrough at camp. The Holy Spirit showed up in really powerful ways, um, and he was also comforting me a lot. I really saw him just speaking over and over and over again and, like, repeating himself about things and themes before even going to camp. Like, I went to camp, and I knew the camp theme was mission, but I didn't really know any of the scripture. I didn't know, like, what, their, what the foundational scriptures were, but it was really neat to see how the Holy Spirit showed up and, like, showed us, like, the scripture even before we even went. So, um... So, like, literally, like, the night before camp on Friday, or on Thursday, I'm sorry, I had spoke and shared a message with the youth group in Luke 10, and, and that was when Jesus called the 72 disciples to go on mission and to, like, and to, to reach out to the neighboring communities, and so I, I shared about that, not knowing what really, like, what camp was going to be about. I mean, I knew it was missions, but I didn't really, that wasn't the theme, and that wasn't really why I was in Luke 10, and um, so he sent out 72 disciples. They were given specific instruction. Um, however, in the midst of them casting out demons and healing the sick, um, Jesus was still focused on their heart posture, and he was still focused on where their heart was at in the midst of all of that. Um, so I'm going to read a little verse, but it says, so Luke 10, verse 19, it says, Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you, but don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. And um, so that was what we talked about on Thursday night. And it was just, it was amazing to see how the Lord showed up because we were just trying to posture our hearts, not focusing on what we can do at camp, not focusing on, you know, what type of miraculous things. We just wanted our names to be registered in heaven. That's our focus. And that was the expectation that we wanted to go or wanted to have going into camp. So, um, and then while we were at camp, we spent time in the beginning of Luke 10. So I shared scripture on Thursday night at the end of Luke 10, and then the Lord brought us back to Luke 10 in the beginning, and that was the camp thing, like during our devotionals, we were, we were in Luke 10, and that was what the camp wanted us to do. So it was just really cool to see how scripture was constantly coming back up, and the Lord was like, Luke 10, Luke 10, Luke 10, and, um, and it was just amazing to see. It was amazing to see all that. Um, but most of all, when we were discussing that part of scripture, we were discussing also, too, like, what we can do in the community here and, like, what we can do to bring youth back to church or not even just youth, anyone we run into, anyone that we're, if we're being called to missions, if we're being called to share things, like, what's our heart posture going to be like, but also, like, what can we do in this community here? So that was really special. Um, so one verse I wanted to remind you guys of church is Matthew 18, where it says, For, there, for where two or three are gathered um, together as my followers, I am there among them. So I want to challenge you guys to um, focus on your heart and see where your heart posture is at. And, um, and, talk, and, um, and just if you can focus on where your heart's at in the midst of whatever is going on, in the midst of like what you, wherever your heart's at as far as like sharing a mission or bringing people to God, like focus on that heart posture and, and bring it to the Lord and have him show you the things, have him reveal his heart to you. Um, so I also want to challenge you to set an expectation before the Lord and see how he shows up. You know, we are promised that the Lord is in our midst when two or more are gathered. So position yourself with the expectation that he's already here because he is. 
So that's what I want you guys to do is just challenge you guys to know that like we were just saying the king of freedom, when he walks in, everyone's free. Well, he's here. Like if you don't, if you went through all of that and didn't, and don't think that he's here, like he's here. So I just want to challenge you guys in that. But with that being said, um, I'm going to call up some of the youth so they can share some of their testimonies and talk about what happened at camp. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. The camp video. We're going to bring and play a video for you guys. It was super special. It was awesome. It was super good. All right. So with that being said, we're going to start sharing some testimonies. God showed up in amazing ways at camp. We had, I think it was three baptisms of the Holy Spirit, two salvations. One person received the gift of interpretation of tongues. So that was amazing. So there's some awesome testimony to share you guys, and I'm super excited. I could not wait to get back to church and share you guys, share with you guys like what happened. It was amazing. So with that being said, London, you're my first person. <laughs> He's like, ah. Oh. That's a lot of people. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, I, I'm shaking an eye. All right. Um, wow, that's a lot of people. Um, <laughs> um, I don't really know what to say. Like, there was just so much stuff that went on, and I think it was like the first night was like really good, but like. For me, there's like many things that happened for other people, but for me, it was the second night that really changed me and like the Holy Spirit moved. So it was like our second worship. So there was our first worship and then it went to the altar call. Yeah, the worship or whatever. Yeah, the altar call. And then we were on that and then I was just worshiping on my knees. And then like an adult came up to me and he was just like, I want to ask you something. And he was like, how are you living? Are you living the way your friends do? Social media, Instagram, Snapchat. And he just stopped there. And then I just felt like the next part I need to say is, yes, I'm living that way. And the way I want to live is I want to live 100% for the Lord. And I just want to follow him. And I just want to read my Bible more. And I want to just wake up in the morning and just worship and then just read my Bible and just follow him and not spend more time on Instagram or TikTok. And I just want to spend more time with him. And when he said that to me, I, I said, yeah, I'm just living the way like my friends do and Instagram, TikTok and all that. And then I don't know why, it just like, it broke me. And I just sat there and realized, I don't know why I'm living this way and I'm living I just sit there and just watch TikTok for hours. Instead, I could be reading my Bible and just listening to worship music. And then the third night came and Anthony prayed for me. And, huh? Can you call it hours? No, we'll do that later. Okay. <laughs> um, but Anthony prayed for me. And after, we, after he was done, I just went on my phone and we weren't allowed to have our phones, but Anthony's a G, but <laughs> um, but I got on my phone and I just de I deleted my um, TikTok and <laughs> um, but I don't know I just 
when I deleted it, I just felt like free yeah. of just, yeah. I don't know, it just felt amazing. And then now I'm just like, I th there's such a big change. And I'm still having problems where I like, I go on my phone and I go straight to it and I'm like trying to find the app. But <laughs> um, yeah, it's gotten a lot better. And I just, I feel like there's more time for like me to spend with like the Lord and I can just read my Bible and I'm not gonna get distracted, distracted by anything. And one thing was there was this um, message guy in a breakout session. No, what was his name? Jamal, um, and it was be bold, yeah, be bold in Christ, and he was talking about, like, idols, and he was, like, talking about, like, how people can have, like, other idols, like, Instagram, TikTok, and your main idol should be Jesus, and that just, like, it made me realize, like, I want Jesus to be my idol, and I don't want anyone else to be. So now I'm like following him and nothing else. So, yeah. That's awesome. That was so good. Yeah. That was also one thing I forgot to say too. So, you know, at youth group, we were in Luke 10. We came to camp. They went in Luke 10. And also too, as a church, we've been reading Romans 12. And then the camp went into Romans 12. So just like so neat to see the Lord just being like, you're going to get this. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So it was really awesome. Um, so Jaden. You are next. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> I think I'm, actually, I'm not sorry, but here you go. There is a lot of people. <laughs> Do I have to use the mic? Yes. Yeah. There's people on mic, I think. Oh, I don't want to talk. I'm scared. My name is Jaden. Um, I think the second night was probably the best night for me, too. I think the second night was the best night for me too. Um, I had London with me, Anthony prayed for me, um, and it basically was very emotional for me because I got touched by the Holy Spirit in a way that... <laughs> and the speaker, I forgot his name. Um, his name was Andy. I, um, he basically like just helped me out a lot when he did set his speech and stuff and just I felt like Andy was the one who helped me, London was the one who helped me, Anthony, basically the whole youth group helped me through everything and then just well that's basically all I gotta say because <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Good job, Jaden. Good job. So he was one of the ones that got baptized in the Holy Spirit. So God showed up in a powerful way. And I just remember I was praying for him, and it literally like three seconds later, he's like, ba -da 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 -da. and it was just amazing to see just the Holy Spirit just show up in such a powerful way. Um, let me see. I have a list. Uh, Sam. Sam. <laughs> uh. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Sam, and I was born in Jackson, and uh, before I went to camp, I had like this heaviness, and I was just really sad, and I had no boldness or courage, and the first two days were like really good, but the third night, it was like amazing. Like Anthony prayed for me, and I just felt like this lightness in my body. Like I felt like I could just start to float. Um, and then... Uh, now I have like just a lot of boldness and courage. Like I don't think I'd be up here if he didn't pray for me. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sam. I gotta share with you guys a little bit. Sam has been such an awesome like addition to the youth group, and just seeing how the Holy Spirit's been moving in him and, and showing up in his life has been such an awesome testimony. Um, but yeah, he yeah you went through it at camp. <laughs> it was good. It was super good. Um, all right, let me see. Ethan. Hey, right. okay, everyone. Um, <laughs> um, I just wanted to share about my time at camp, too. Um, I think it was, every night was just so awesome, but, um, it was probably the third night for me that I got hit the hardest. Um, 
um, I went up to Colin um, during our during during worship during our altar card altar call time, <laughs> and he just he prayed over me and just I was I was just telling about stuff I've been going through, and he prayed over me just like perfectly. And just everything I had ever felt, he just like I went over it and he just like felt I felt like just amazing afterwards. And then um, and then and then after after he was done praying and, and talking to me, he said just just go just just, just go up up there like to, to the altar and just sit down and just worship. So I went down there, um, and then they, they, they started playing the song, um, All Hail King Jesus, and then I felt like I should just get on my hands and knees and just bow before the Lord. And I was doing that, and then all of a sudden I, I started to go in, into travail, and I was just like bawling, and I couldn't control myself. And I had never been into in, in tra- 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 travail before, and then um, I came out of travail, and then I was like, Lord, give me more, give me more. And then I w- went in again, and it was just like, it hit me even harder, and I was like, fuck, I was going to throw up because I was trying crying so hard and he was just like hitting me over and over and over and then um and then Jesse went, went, up, went up and started to, to, to speak over the whole entire like uh church and then then I came out of travail again and I was just like sitting there like listening to what he said and then he came down I was hugging my sister and my brother and then we were all, all we were all kind of just crying um and then and then Anthony and, the, and the, whole, the whole youth group just surrounded us and they were just praying over us um just about a lot a lot of stuff and then my sister started to cry and I was trying to just like keep myself together because I've been crying the whole night, um, <laughs> and then and then the Lord just decided just to knock me out, and I just I I got, I got slain in the spirit, which is on the on the ground crying, couldn't even hold myself up anymore. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. This week was just a blessing for me. I feel like I grew t- tremendously, and I felt the Lord in, in ways I hadn't before. So. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Do you want to share anything? Yeah, you guys good? Do you want to share anything? Okay. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> do you want to share something? Okay. I'm just, nope, we're good. All right. <laughs> so, um, with that being said, I guess I will go ahead and have Becca and Colin come up. Actually, no, Allie in London. Allie in London. Can you guys come up real quick? So there's one more special testimony, and this is the one I wanted to share with you guys, so, uh, okay. I best not be the only one talking this whole time. <laughs> all right, so, first thing I wanted to say was, like, before all this happened was, Anthony prayed for me, and I don't think this would have happened if he wouldn't have prayed for me. I mean, it could have, but I think when he prayed for me, well, I'll just say, like, when he prayed for me, Becca and Anthony were praying for me, and then I was just, I was screaming and just speaking in tongues, and it was just like, I don't think I've ever felt like that in a while, (laughs) and then all of a sudden, Anthony, like, blew on me, and I just felt like this, no, like, it was like this power just, like, entered me, and then I just, like, fell back, and I landed on, like, I don't even know what I hit. I know I hit something on my head. Yeah. (laughs) And... He hit the stage, so... (laughs) Yeah, and I, like, when I, like, was on the ground, I was just, like, on so fire for the Lord, and I was just, like, crying, and I was just, like, I don't even know how to explain it, but then after I got up, and I was just, like, praying, and then I had a word, like, the Lord just said, go pray for Allie, just speak in tongues, and just pray for her, I was, like, are you sure, because, like, (laughs) I was, like, really, and then he was, like, there's a reason for it, just go do it. And then I went up to her, and I was like, hey, can I just pray for you and just speak in tongues? So I started speaking in tongues, and then it was going on for a little. And then I was done. And then the Lord was like, ask her if she heard anything. So I was just like, did you maybe hear anything? And then... You, oh. you said you heard. Okay. And then, <laughs> so yeah, as he was praying for me, I just heard like... He was all in tongues, and in my mind, I just heard him like, it was, it's, okay, it's going to be okay, I see you, and I love you. And it was just like over and over and over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it was super cool. It was awesome to see, like, Allie literally was interpreting his tongues, and it was just amazing to see that, because I haven't seen that really in a while. And it was like, <laughs> sorry, sorry. And one thing that also, like, kind of like, made me think like maybe this is something is like when I was speaking in tongues over her it was in new tongues like I was speaking I've never spoken in that like way it was like a different like 
sounding tongues. I don't know how to explain that, but yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. When I was praying for London, I was huffing and puffing. <laughs> it's been a lot of work over there. I'm not going to lie to you guys. So, yeah, it was, it was, pretty, it was pretty good. But, um, yeah, it was just camp was amazing, you guys. Like, I can't even express it enough just to see, like, a lot of the changes, too. Like, they, they made some major changes compared to last year. And just to see the difference in their heart and, like, how they were running things, it was just so much more smoother. The, the Holy Spirit just had, like, there was more freedom. There were, it was just amazing to see that and, like, see the, the invitation that the kids had to come to the front and to pray. And, like, these kids were literally there to, like, midnight to w- almost 1 in the morning in the, in the uh, main sanctuary praying. And there was really only, like, three youth groups that were doing that, maybe if that. And, like, they were just, like, they were in there, and they were hungry. And they were, like, and I remember some of the youth kids were, like, I don't care if, if we have to stay there till 6 in the morning. I'm staying there, and I'm worshiping. And I'm, like, all right, we're going to bed, you guys. So, <laughs> um, but, yeah, even, in the, even when things went wrong, too, like, where we had, you know, we had a little bit of a scare with, um, you know, London. And, um, and even when things went wrong, I still felt the Holy Spirit, and I still felt, like, that he was there in the midst of everything, and I somehow had energy to make it all five days, <laughs> going to bed at two o'clock in the morning, waking up at seven, so it was great, you know, so uh, I'm still re- in recovery, so pray for me, I really would appreciate that, <laughs> but um, so yeah, go ahead, and I'll have you come up and call in and share a little bit too. Where's Alejandro? Are you here, bro? No, I'm going to share about Alejandro, just because it was great. That dude's a little boxer. So I had nicknamed him Ali, like Muhammad Ali. I don't know why. And then we were, that was so great. We were sitting in the chairs, and everybody's getting riled up, and I'm sitting right next to him. And he jumps up like this with both hands and just straight uppercuts me. This was right after. (laughs) Didn't bleed. My nose didn't bleed. This was right after I uh, named him Ali. So... I don't know, James, you might want to get with Alejandro, and that might be prophetic, bro, I don't know. Um, but um, no, I, I, I loved the intentionality of the kids. They were all about the true gospel, the true message, the hard message. Um, Andy was all against um, fake hype, which I was like, oh, praise God. Like, like, energy is great, and, you know, that's awesome, and you guys were worshiping, and that was amazing, but um, it was more than just hype for you guys, and I'm really proud of you guys for that. Um, It was real when you went and worshipped. It was worship in light of what God was calling you to. I could see that in your spirit, and um, that was that was amazing. So you guys have great kids. You guys are a great youth group. Um, I'm proud of you, Jesse and Karen, bro. That was awesome. You guys got up and and stood up in front of that whole 500 kids and shared what the the Lord put on your heart. So um, you guys are awesome. Um, And as a leader, I know there can kind of be a, a leader mentality where you come in and, you know, I'm a leader, so we have a certain type of relationship, but it wasn't about that. I actually felt like I could just be your guys' friend um, in the midst of being a leader and the small opportunities I could, and I just want to thank you guys for opening your hearts to me um, and just being a friend and letting me be your friend. That was really, really cool. Um, so, so many highlights. I think I could go on, but um, I'll pass the baton. Thank you. Yeah, this week was amazing. Like, I could just continue what everybody else was saying. But I've got to say, my girls were amazing. They're like angels. I mean, I could wake them up at 7.15, and they were ready at, like, 7.50. Like, no, I could even wake them at 7.30, and they were already ready for breakfast. Like, amazing. Yeah, we're going to have to go through probably, like, a, um, like maybe, like, life skills for the guys. I'm not even kidding you. We'd wake, I'd wake them up at 7 o'clock in the morning. We weren't ready till 7.55. I'm like, they're like, I got to do my hair. I got to go. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, you guys are insane. I know. The girls are like, they just hop out of bed, do their makeup, get their hair done. They're ready to go. And I'm like, you guys are awesome. Um, but with that, I um, spent, a lot of, spent some time before we went to camp just praying over the girls. And I just felt like the Lord had gave me words for them. But a specific thing I just felt in my spirit over and over again is that the Lord was saying that they're going to um, forgive others and they're going to forgive themselves. And that's the theme that I heard for the girls. And I kid you not, there was so much confirmation happening at camp. The first night, Andy, during the altar time, was saying, I feel like there are some girls in this place that just need to, they just need to forgive. There just needs to be forgiveness. 
And I was like, okay, Lord, that's cool because that's what I was feeling in my spirit. And then for another person, I, he was talking about boldness and being courageous. And that was a word that I had for one of the students that same night. So I was like, God, thank you so much for your confirmation. Um, and with that, like, we actually, one of the nights got to lead one person through that. And it was like, we were leading them for forgiveness. And then at some point, Anthony was like, is there something else you need to forgive? And they were like, myself. And I was like, God, literally the exact words you gave is what actually happened. And to me, that was like so special. And the first night, Andy was talking about um, where are you at and what do you want? And that's like, he was like, come to the altar, wait, like, look in yourself, where are you at, but where do you want to be? And ask yourself that and ask God. And so after he kind of shared about the forgiveness and the words, we got back to the cabin and I asked them, like, so where, you, where did you, what, what do you guys feel like you heard? Like, where are you? And like, what do you want? And just each one of them were saying, I just feel like, I just want that, the bitterness and the heaviness that I've been feeling to just go. And that's what I told God. Like, I just want that bitterness to go and I want to forgive. And like, just to see that theme carried out, like the whole week. And I'm just so proud of these students. I'm proud of these girls for getting in and their friendships towards one another is so beautiful. And the, the watch, watching them come alongside of each, each one of them and just help them just process things. Like it's so godly and I just am so pr proud of them. And it's been a blessing to just pour into you guys, but in return get filled up by what you guys were experiencing. And that brings in so much encouragement to me. Um, so yeah, just good job. And the Lord is on, on the same page everywhere we go. He's speaking the same message and it's not that hard to hear when you just like, just silence your mind, silence where you're at and just listen. He's constantly repeating himself and it was just a really special time. But with that, I, we're going to transition into a time of worship, um, with Ethan and my dad, they're going to sing gratitude. Um, and this song, this song was like, I feel like everybody's theme song throughout camp. Um, I know all of you guys had a connection with it, but um, Anthony was saying on the way home that the boys had asked, could we listen to Gratitude on the way home? And the, in the car ride home, they were worshiping in the car. And so we're going to strip this down. It's going to be just acoustic. And my brother was like, I would like to, would like to sing that song. So we're going to honor that. He's been wanting to sing in front of people for a while and just feeling like that's something a part, like part of his calling he wants to start doing. So we get to be in that um, fulfillment today. So if you guys would just worship with us, it's going to be acoustic and it's bring all that you have. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do. Every song must end in you never. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. All that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, 
got nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah Hallelujah I've got one response I've got just one my arms stretched wide I will worship you so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again cause all that I have is a hallelujah hallelujah and I know it's not much, I've got nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. So come on my soul, oh don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song, cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. So come on my soul, oh don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song, cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise on my soul oh don't you get shy on me lift up your song cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs get up and praise the Lord so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again cause all that I have is a high Nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. To have uh, some of our elders, um, leaders, council come up here in a minute and just pray over these kids and our youth leaders. And I want to thank you, Anthony, um, Colin, Rebecca, um, for taking on that role to go be counselors um, and to sacrifice. Anyone ever been a counselor at youth camp? I mean, I don't want to be the guy who's like, well, back in my day. <laughs> but getting five hours sleep, so I'm like, you did pretty good. <laughs> I used to take a case of Rockstar. Because there was like not much sleep. Anyone that's ever been, you are poured out physically, emotionally you're drained, spiritually 
you have poured out. That's a whole different level. I just worked hard, physically tired. Or you're just an emotional state. When you have your physical, emotional, and your spiritual poured out, that's a different place. And thank you guys for, for being willing to go to that place. And uh, thank you, Jessica, for going and taking the pictures and, and being with these girls and um, yeah. taking that, that step. There's a lot of gifts and a lot of different uh, people that are able to meet different ones. And um, it, it truly is neat to hear the testimony. Some of you that are unfamiliar, um, there's gifts of the Holy Spirit. Some people believe that they ended um, with the, the disciples or the apostles. Um, but these kids are evidence that they went up on a mountain. I told them before they left, I said, you should expect to go. Good things have happened when you read the, when you read, when you read the Bible when people went up on the mountaintop. They would take a journey to go up on the mountain to meet the Lord. And I said, I just believe you're going you're gonna to meet the Lord in a, in a special way. And the Lord met them there. And Sam, you're talking about a boldness. Acts chapter 2 says that you will receive power. Well, Acts 1, 8, 1 says it. But then it happens in Acts 2. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. To be my witness. You see, there's a boldness that comes on when you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. To witness to proclaim the goodness of God. To, to proclaim that, look, there's a God and he's real and his spirit has touched mine and I'll never be the same. And the fear of talking to people goes away. The fear of not fulfilling what God wants you to do goes in the back seat and there's a power that's inside of you now that's different. It's not yours. It's a power that's supernatural. How many know, like, that's a good thing? Like, your power can do some things, but his power can do all things. Amen? So there's a handful of the kids that experienced that first time empowerment. That doesn't mean they weren't saved. Jesus breathed on his disciples. After he died on the cross, he resurrected. He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. The breath. They received the Holy Spirit. Then he told them, now go wait they waited in the upper room until you receive power. So there is a separate, there's a, having the Holy Spirit come into your life, he lives in you, then there's an empowerment that he told the disciples, don't go into all the world until you receive this power. And when you do, you will be my witnesses unto the earth. That's powerful. So these kids have encountered that. Also, some of the other things that went with that you might go like, what the heck? Well, if God's so good, why the heck are they crying the whole time? There's times that the Holy Spirit will let you experience and feel travail. I'll never forget, I was in, in Africa on a whole other continent, and they said, let's pray for our nation. They were, they were praying for their nation and interceding, and I began to pray for our nation. And the Spirit of God let me feel His Spirit towards our nation. And I was in travail. I, I, I was on a concrete floor like this, and I'll never forget when I got up, there was a puddle. There was a puddle of the tears that had come out of me. And it wasn't that I was, like, I was sad. I was interceding with his heart, with his love for this nation. The Bible says that he will intercede with groans that cannot be uttered. That's what you were experiencing. It's a beautiful thing to partner to be, and for you to say, Lord, I want more. Some people go, I don't want, I don't want no more part of that. <laughs> Give me the, yay, praise the Lord stuff. But I don't know if I want that. It's a beautiful thing. It's super cool when the Lord gives you gifts, you know, to, to be able to interpret a language. And, and how neat that, yeah, you had your heavenly language that you pray. Like you'd already been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but the Lord gave you a whole nother one. You're like, I know this is it, like... This isn't my normal thing. And then he showed you, hey, this was exactly me. I wanted you to go pray for her, not in your regular language, because he wanted to show her, I'm giving you a gift of interpretation. So cool. Look what happens when we're obedient. Many of you, you, you encountered the presence of the Lord in a different way. You came down the mountain. And some people, they come to these services, they go, well, we'll see. We'll see how long it sticks. We'll see. If that's your attitude, man, I, I, I'm not going to say it. 
My flesh wants to come out there. I believe, and I did tell you guys this, when you come back down the mountain, it'll be like a Moses. There will be a shine. There will be a glory. But you won't have to veil it. Because it wasn't, God wasn't protecting people from the, the glory that was on his face. Moses covered himself so that they wouldn't see the glory fade. You won't have to worry about the glory fading. Young people, let me tell you, it's not about your religious acts. It's not about you, and thank God, he, he will tell us to delete some things, get rid of some stuff, but you're not earning your, your place with him. You're, you're not striving so that you can be good enough that he'll love on you, that he'll be there for you. you he just wants to be with you, and you get to take time aside and sit down with him and open up the word of God and, and let him speak to you and spend time with him in his presence. We all get to do that. You don't do that to earn favor with him. You don't do that so now if I, if I read my Bible for 30 days in a row, then maybe he'll think I'm good enough to do something for me. When he went to the cross, he said, you're good enough. You're enough. And he exchanged your righteousness, which was filthy rags, just like mine, for his righteousness. And he sees you now as if you've never sinned. That's how he views you. And you don't have to sit down and read your Bible. You don't have to do a bunch of religious things to make your way with him so that then he'll say, oh, you were good. Now I'll do something for you. You're not good. I wasn't good. None of us were good enough except for the one. And he exchanged his life of perfection, of dotting every I, crossing every T for ours. So don't exchange it back. Wake up in the morning. When you go to bed, say, thank you, Lord, that I'm your son or that I'm your daughter in whom you're well pleased. Thank you that I don't have to earn your favor. I have your favor. Thank you, Lord, that you see me as righteous. You see me as holy. I am your son. And because of that, it affects how you live. And because of the encounter, because of the presence that you encountered, you want more of that. So you don't go and do 15 jumping jacks and 40 Hail Marys, and you just go back into his presence. And you say, Lord, I'm here to be with you. And like any good father, they love when their kids say, Dad, I just want to spend some time with you. I don't need your credit card. I don't need your keys. I don't need something. I just want to be with you. Amen? That's what you encountered a part of, and I would just highly encourage you, just go back into that place, not out of duty, not out of, not out of obligation, not because you think everyone will look, won't look at me right if I don't do these different things. You do it from a pure heart. Amen? Church, what do you think? Yeah. Amen? I just, I, I think, I, I think I would um, really miss it if I don't give opportunity today. I, I those of you who are, don't normally come, um, this wasn't hype today. Um, we don't do things just to try to um, change your, the emotional atmosphere so that we will get a response. Um, but I will tell you, if you're not excited about what God's doing in your life, he might not be doing much in your life. Like it, there is, like I said, when, when he has freed you, you should be excited about that. When, when he has healed someone or touched your body physically or an emotional way or or literally forgiven all of your sins and cast them as far as the east is from the west, you should be excited about that. And that will draw emotion. So um, if you encountered anything like that today and you're just like, man, this isn't my normal gig, um, but I did feel the presence of God. I, we pray that you did. And we pray that when you come into this place that you will encounter the presence of God. And then we also pray that if you are not in relationship with him, I don't mean that you don't have knowledge of him, but that if you're not in relationship where you can say, he is my savior. Not that he's the savior of the world, but he's my personal savior. I have surrendered my heart, my will, my emotions, my plans, my future to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, today's your day. If you, if you truly want to walk in a freedom where these kids could care less if they're in front of you or not, worshiping the Lord and dancing. If you want to experience a freedom that when you leave this place, you're still free. His name is Jesus. The thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus said, I have come to give you life, and abundance of life. 
That's abundance of life means you're not in a cell. Amen? You're free. If that's you today, I would love to introduce you to Jesus. And, and you don't really need me, but sometimes it's nice to have someone pray with you. You can, you can call on. The Bible says anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anyone who calls out, Jesus, I want you, I need you. Will you come and change my life? Guess what? He's going to show up. He's faithful. But if you'd like some extra prayer today, I would encourage you to come forward. We're going to pray for these youth. And then you come forward, and uh, I'd love to have let these kids pray over some of you. If you have needs today, before we get out of here, you need a healing. If you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and you would say, I, I want that. I don't even know for sure what it is, but I know it's good. And Jesus, uh, it's a gift that he wants for me. So anything he has, I want. Let, I'm going to have them pray for you guys. And I believe that, that they're going to lay hands on you. You're going to get healed. You're going to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Um, you're going to get delivered if you need deliverance. And if you need salvation, I would love to introduce you to the man, the man Jesus. Amen? Amen. Come on, kids. Come on up here. I want to pray over you guys and, and leaders. Um, if, you, if you would like to um, have someone pray with you for healing, um, after that, after we lay hands on them, just go ahead and stay up here, and, and they'll come pray with you. If you need Jesus, you want to say, I would love to um, be introduced to Jesus. I want to know that I've been saved today. Come and see me, and I would love to pray with you. And if you're doing that right now in your seat, at least let me know before we leave that, hey, I said that prayer, because I'd love to give you a Bible, give you some tools. Amen? All right. You guys get up here small in a circle so that we can kind of surround you and pray for you. We're not going to beat you up. So, Lord, we, we lift up the young people today. Lord, we just thank you for, for what they've done, um, the commitment, Lord, that they've made up on the mountain. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're the same God on the mountain in the valley. I thank you, God, that, that you are a God who says, I do not change. You are not limited by geography, so we thank you. I thank you, Lord, that they are carrying you right now in your spirit. Everywhere they go, you are with them. That's what you told Joshua. You said, be strong and courageous, for I will go with you everywhere you go. So, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, and I just thank you, Lord, that you are imprinting that on their heart today. Lord, that you are the same God on the mountain that you are in the valley that, Lord, you are not going to leave them. Lord, as they walk with you and talk with you and spend time with you, Lord, you're going to reveal more of yourself to them, and they will grow more and more in love with you. And, Lord, I just break off shame, I break off guilt, and I break off condemnation. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that, that you said in John 3, 17, you did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. So, Lord, we thank you for freedom, no condemnation in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that, that you've given them, Lord, a spirit of adoption and a spirit of sonship, that they are your sons and your daughters of the Most High God, in whom you are well pleased. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you've instilled. We thank you for the, um, the gifts, Lord, that, that you have empowered them with. And I pray, Lord, for favor, Lord, as they go back out into the world, Lord, as they spend time with their friends, Lord. I pray, Lord, that, that they would be sensitive to your, to your spirit of conviction. Lord, and with the conviction, they would not have shame and guilt go along with it. I pray, Lord, that it would just be that little gentle nudge and reminder of the things that you've drawn them to. So we thank you for that, Lord. For the leaders, Lord, I just lift up Anthony right now. I thank you, Lord, for his commitment to serve these youth. Lord, I just ask for a breakthrough in his, in his uh, work environment, Lord, in his home environment, in his natural um, environment, Lord, that, that, Lord, you would give him favor. Lord, I pray, Lord, that there would be a, an anointing and there would be an ease. Lord, where there's been resistance, where there's been um, uh, challenges, Lord, where there's been uh, a re just resistance, there's just been a lot of resistance, Lord, that there would be an, a, just a greasing of the tracks and anointing and oil, Lord, over the cogs and over the gears, Lord, that things would begin to free up, Lord, and that he would know that it was you, that he wouldn't have to try to push, he wouldn't have to try to prod, he wouldn't have to beat on the door, he wouldn't have to try to go get a winch and tow it, that, Lord, he would just begin to walk and things would just begin to move before him. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you for the um, fruit, Lord, that, that he is um, producing and is being shared with these young people. We just pray blessing over Anthony, Lord. We just bless him in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So at this time, if you, have a, a, if, if you need to be dismissed, you can be dismissed. But if uh, you would like to have prayer, you, you want someone to pray and lay hands on you for healing or for deliverance or for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, 
or you want to come up and, and just say, like, I would like to meet Jesus. Will you tell me more about that? I'd love to do that. Don't leave the same way. Amen? Amen. Yes, sir. If you've got a word from the Lord or something you'd like to share with one of them, please do that. If you can turn the background music up just a little bit, it would be good. Share a testimony real quick. Uh, my mom last night, actually, why don't you share this as you guys are praying? Last night about 12.30, I woke up and my heart was out of rhythm. And it was speeding up and slowing down, and it continued to do that till I got here to church. But I will say, I was determined I was going to get healed. And numerous people prayed for me. And um, after Stephen got up and talked that last time, the Lord said, get up front. So I walked up there, and I'd done the little EKG, and it kept saying uh, inconclusive. And I'm like, no, I'm not accepting inconclusive. I want sinus rhythm. And so just a while ago, I did it again, and it says sinus rhythm. This EKG does not show any atrial fibrillation. Amen. Jesus is king. What was your rate? It was like 150 last night and out of rhythm. Yeah, back to good. Jesus hasn't changed. Amen. Jesus still heals. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Jenny prayed for you. Well, it's cool if whoever prayed for you, but Jesus healed you. Neither one of like, I pray for people. I don't know how to heal people. Jesus does all those things. Amen. Amen. So we got some kids that would love to pray with you. If you have a request or you have a need, if, if you leave with it, that's your own fault. Amen? If, if, if you leave the same way and you have a need, that's your, that's your doing. But I know that God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Amen? Amen.